Hello. Hi, Tango. Hi. How are you doing? Um, I'm just wondering, uh, great you, you are there, where your panelists are, because they're all on the right side. Yeah, it's not it's not intuitive. You have to rejoin when you're when you're in the preview. You have to rejoin the room, uh, right? In order for it to think, I think so. I should. So people should just tell them you need to leave, then come back in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think you also started streaming, so we're already live, which is no problem. Yeah. Um, let's just ask everybody to leave and then um, join again. Yes, and I think uh, we got already Pino uh, Pina here, who is your panelist. Let him in. There's a function called uh, grab the mic. Maybe you've seen that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he's now joining. Hi, Pina. Hi. Hi. Very good. Okay, we have uh, you already. Uh, let's um, get the others in. You know, uh, just uh, start, uh, Tanvir and Pina. I will try to get the others in. Okay. Yeah, you just go ahead. Yes. So it, it is it is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent that survives. It is one of the it is one that is the most adaptable to change. Charles Darwin said that uh, a, about a century ago, and I think it's an that's an apt quote for the time we're living in uh, today. Uh, We've lived through uh, a hell of a year. Um, uh, COVID-19 has changed the way we work, changed uh, a lot of things about our lives. Um, and my name is Tanvir Kathawala. I run a venture firm at the Nexus between National Security and Innovation based in Alexandria, Virginia, which is just north of the Washington, D.C. area. And today we're going to have a discussion on, on how we're going to extend digital solutions with working from home to working remotely, the impacts it makes uh, on us from, psych from a psychological perspective to how does it affect the, 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 kind of the emerging, emerging world? And, you know, is, is, is remote work here to say? And is it a positive thing or a negative thing? Um, and so I'm thrilled uh, to be joined by um, a distinguished panel. Um, I will try to be a good chair. Um, and uh, with that, I would like to, um, in an effort to kind of promote discussion, we're going to try to keep our answers to, the, to under three minutes, max. And I'm going to kick off with a few questions, but not everyone needs to answer every single question. So feel free to jump in and kind of ask each other questions. I hope to make this as much of a discussion as possible. And so before, I'd like to turn it over to the room to have people introduce themselves. Um, in addition, when you're talking about your background, can you please mention in there what you think working remotely or working from home is a positive thing or a negative thing, and, and, and tell me why. And so, uh, Pino, why, why don't we start off with you from, we're going right to Japan uh, with you. T tell us okay. about yourself T and tell us how you're doing. Hello? Hey, Pina. Hi, uh, yeah. You mean me? To talk? Yeah. Talking to you, okay. yeah, yeah. Can you introduce okay. your, who uh, you are yeah. and if you're you're pro pro or negative? Mm -hmm. okay, okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the, I'm excited to be here and to talk about this theme. So, uh, the my background is a uh, running a software company uh, for enterprises and uh, having uh, several uh, cloud uh, tools to support uh, this kind of remote work. In fact, our company have been uh, doing the uh, remote work for over years, about 90% uh, of remote radio work at home. So uh, I think uh, we can uh, share uh, several uh, issues and ideas and our results with you uh, about our remote work and the digital uh, tool usage. Thank you. Are, you. are you pro? Do you like working remotely? Or are you personally? Do you think it's a it's a good thing or, or a bad thing? Uh, today, uh, do you mean today? Or no, just in general. Uh, um, generally, I uh, work from home uh, most of the time uh, over the year from the February last week. Uh, no, 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 last year. 
and uh, using um, a full uh, digitalized environment, uh, like a studio at my home. Wonderful. All right, why, why don't we, we switch gears? Let's go to the U.S. Let's, uh, Alex, tell us, tell us about um, who's the CFO of C Labs. Tell us about C Labs and how you feel about remote work or, or, or not remote work. Sure. Yeah, and it's great to be joined by everybody on this panel. Um, so Steel Labs was the founder, uh, initial architect of the Zello Protocol and Ecosystem, which is uh, an open source uh, finance platform that basically enables um, financial tools for anyone with a mobile phone. Um, so there are yeah two billion people in the world um, who have a mobile phone, but um, do not have access to a bank account. Um, and we've created a, basically a, te a tech uh, suite or um, stack to, to really enable kind of um, financial tools. So regarding working from home versus working in office, I, I think I'm biased because I'm in the crypto world where everything is decentralized and global and borderless. So for me, I think, um, you know, working from home is more inclusive um, and enables you to attract talent um, as an entrepreneur from around the world rather than a specific um, geographic location. So I'm net very positive on work from home because it enables us to globally collaborate and build products for a global audience by having um, a global team um, that you know, isn't restricted to um, where they happen to grow up or where they happen to be able to afford to to live. Um, I also think that you know advancements in collaboration tools um, have made it really quite easy to um, to multitask and to work across borders. So you know between Slack, um, Google Hangouts, Google Calendar, Google Docs, um, I think it's now much easier to effectively and efficiently collaborate um, asynchronously and synchronously. Um, so net net very positive. Um, the way we're personally restructuring is uh, to have community centers. So it's, we've, we're completely doing away with this notion of an office rank and file from the industrial revolution uh, and rather turning physical spaces into community centers where people can creatively collaborate and, and build community. Um, but yeah, I think it's time to rethink um, our traditional notions of, of what an office. We, we have to we have to get more into those community centers, uh, Alex. At some point, so to to, to switch to, to tour around the world we're on today. To, why don't we why don't we go to um, Norway and talk and hear more about learn more about Christian Ragan, hear about um, the exciting company. He's leading called Strategy Tools in Norway, and, and hear about his his opinion on uh, working working remotely. Christian, great to have you. Thank you, and uh, good morning. Um, just to check in, you um, is, is sound okay? Your sound is great. Perfect. All right. So yeah, no, you know, I I just echo Alex here. Uh, I think the 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 remote distributed is 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 here to stay. Obviously. Uh, you know, being forced into a situation like this with COVID may may not be the best approach, but it absolutely pushed a lot of organizations to making leaps that we have been advocating for a very long time. Um, so I'm um, I, I'm a, I'm a strategy advisor. I am an active investor. I faculty at multiple business schools, and you know, we have been trying to get our business schools to go remote for but more than a decade, and and now we finally got there. So. <clears throat> Moving forward, I think we're going to see you know a very nice blend approach. Of course, there are going to be people that prefer the working from home. And Alex, I don't like the working from home part. I like working remotely, but it's you know as a nuance. Um, I'm super excited to get a chance to be working in five countries on the same workday without having to get any airplanes. And you know it's going to be really really difficult to get me back on planes moving forward. Um, and just like Alex said, you know, we recruit globally, we have a global team, and there's just no way that we could centralize all of these people and talent in an office um, or even even community centers. So um, positive, bullish, 
Uh, and there's going to be some adjustments back in the short term, but but I'm I'm actually very very net positive to quote Alex on the uh, remote that's here to stay. Thank you. Thank thanks so much, Christian. Um, we next uh, and uh, we have a few more panelists that will be able to join. But we might be having some technical problems, and hopefully she can hear me. Uh, Patricia Bonhart, probably the coolest job title that I I've, I've ever come across. She's the enlightener from XR and from Italy. So I, I think we're all, um, we all are just uh, looking forward to learning from Patricia. Patricia, how are you? I'm fine. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, that's good. Good news. So thank you very much for um, introducing me. Yes, and uh, being an enlightener is kind of a, a fun name and, a, and, a, and an empowering name. It's, uh, I'm part of the advisory board on Mixer, and so we bring light to the company. So just to respond to your question. So what we do at Mixer is create community. So I was thrilled to listen to uh, comments of Alex when he was talking about uh, the, the, the impactful and, and powerful way to um, bring people to work. Indeed, the last 15 months have been um, disruptive. Uh, that's the least we can say in, uh, in many ways. And um, uh, if, we, if we want to bounce back, and I don't like the word bounce back because I think we have to bounce forward um, in, in, in the future and going into the future of work, we need to activate the communities, bring employees together. And what we do at Mixer is use the technology to bring people and employees in the same work environment and bringing them together around shared interests. Um, by having all these shared interests, by having all these people coming together, they create a community over time. And it's by creating a community that you give them a sense of being part of the process and being part of the success, being part of finding solutions. Um, you create trust, you enable trust and so belonging, which are the first building blocks in any relationship. And as people have been you know, working remotely, the future of work is going to be hybrid and, um, and communities will allow people to still have this, you know, a remote work environment, even if they cannot come back to the workspace where they used to work before. So we believe that communities is, um, is a great way to integrate diversity and inclusion. It's a way to build trust and belonging which are the four key elements, and um, they are vital for creating the future of work, to create innovation, creation, and so growth for the future of businesses. And we believe that, um, uh, you know, we need to work on a new model, which is human-centric, uh, to allow performance, but also to meet the basic needs of everyone working for these companies. What, what, what that is... a. Uh... That's a great statement. And I have to say, Patricia, uh, I feel like you're, you're saying that. And look, we're having this conversation. Uh, we're all in different time zones around the world having a, 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 a conversation essentially about breaking the digital divide. I, don't, I think this conversation is a, is a testament to that. Uh, and so, you know, I, 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 you know I'm gonna, I have a couple questions that I'm going to just jump us off, but feel free just to to kind of dive right in and, and kind of ask each other questions and, and get this conversation going. So Alex, you had mentioned about kind of creating these community centers and, and how the old industrial model of, of offices, if you kind of think about it, you know, an office uh, and working behind a computer, it's kind of like we just basically took computers and, and applied that to the old industrial model of how we work. And I guess this kind of COVID accelerated that we're all, we're all digital. We, computer, you, all you need is an internet connection, the computer, it really kind of work from anywhere. Uh, but the the question is, I it, look, I have a, I work with companies around the way, the portfolio companies in Europe. We have employees in California, with one guy in, in uh, uh, one, one person in uh, the Philippines. I, I completely, it's, it, 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 the world is so flat. It, 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 there's a, there's kind of very little area of collaboration. But my, my question is, is how will, you know, when we think of so much of what we think of workplace culture, so much of what we think of company culture, is that kind of sitting around the water cooler, having that kind of spur the moment idea of, 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 of kind of 
having a place where you you can kind of where we kind of think of work as a place, not just a state of being. Tell me about like what what does the future hold? What what are company what are company what are the company what are the best practices your companies are following? Just a pine play play pundit. You know, this is uh, it, it, it's a pretty hard idea for a lot of people to think. Yeah, you know, work is not a uh, is not sitting in an office park or hopping on an airplane going to visit a client site. That it is, you know, uh, it's it's more of a state of mind, and you can kind of do that in, a, in kind of any place in your house or you know a, an exact location. So I'll, I'll I you know Alex, I'll, I'll go to you first, but um, everyone, you don't have to answer. Just just pop in after Alex. Yeah, so so I think you alluded to something uh, important, which is that you know the the most of modern office spaces are organized like you know a, a factory kind of assembly line, rank and file. Um, you know, and you could you know if you imagine like a sewing mill, and each person has their individual station, rank and file. Um, it, it would look, we, we've basically just replaced it with a, with a computer in many instances. And I think um, to, uh, to Christian's point, you know, really we should have been going and, you know, rethinking um, how spaces should be used already. Um, but COVID-19 really um, forced us to accelerate that, that original progress. Um, and, you know, as you know, traditional notions of like building community around the water cooler, certainly, you know, we have, we, there is that historical habit, but, but that shouldn't prevent us from building new habits um, and thinking about how spaces can be more effectively and efficiently used and how we can create new spaces um, where community can develop. Um, and I would say um, kind of, uh, a physical dimension to it and then and, then a virtual dimension. So with the community centers, I mentioned, you know, these are places where people can um, come, um, you know, one day, two days, three days a week. And they're really um, segmented into different goals. So there's one section of the office that's really um, around uh, brainstorming. And so there's a whiteboard there and, um, and then there's another area that's really about kind of um, uh, strengthening bonds. So, you know, that there's uh, like a, a ping pong, a foosball table there. Um, and then there's another area where it's just like really siloed working. So we have these booths that are for, if you're coding, for example, and you're like, I can't have any distractions, I need to go in the zone. There's like this silent booth. So depending on what your the nature of your goal is, we've created new physical spaces that cater to that end goal in mind. Rather than having a generic kind of physical space for all purposes, we have um, purpose-specific physical spaces. Um, and then I would also mention that, you know, you can create community um, virtually as well. And I mean, you see this with gaming. I mean, a lot of, um, you know, if you think about like MMORPGs, multi-massive on-player online role-playing games, like, you know, these are people who feel very strong bonds to people they perhaps physically never met. Um, and even in the context of a workplace, you know, one thing we've um, we've done is, is do online game team building activities. Um, so, you know, you can imagine um, in, instead of doing like a physical retreat, which is not really possible if you have one person in the Philippines, one person in London, one person in, you know, San Francisco. Um, so what we've what we've personally done is um, have uh, like virtual escape rooms. So you basically uh, have to solve these puzzles, and there's a moderator, and basically you're working in real time. Um, to solve uh, puzzles with your teammates and, and you and you're timed um, and so you you have real life problem solving um, and you have to work together as a team to solve these problems um, and what has effectively occurred in that process is you're you're building this team spirit you're building community um, and you're doing it in a completely virtual way and so all that is to say that our traditional notion of where community needs to form, um, is not um, 
you know, can be reimagined, right? Just because we did it previously one way doesn't mean it can't be done better um, a different way in the future. And I agree with um, Patricia, you know, we really need to think about what are people first solutions, right? I mean, I think too much like, you know, I think we're, we, we, we really need to think about like, is this a, can, is this a people first solution? Is it, or is this just, um, you know, a solution that has worked historically? I think we really need to take a more holistic view into um, how, you know, how we look at what can meet the entire um, needs of this individual as they bring their whole self to work. And, you know, I would love to hear from everybody, but in particular, I'd love to hear from Patricia a little more on, on kind of her people first approach thinking. You want me to uh, respond straight? I, I love what you, what you are doing, Alex, and I would love to continue this conversation even after this, this one on the panel. Um, but but you, you were, I, I think you are very right in saying that, uh, you know, before COVID, there were pre-existing conditions. And with, when you look at numbers, and these has been um, surveys that have been conducted by Gallup and, and McKinsey um, in to, uh, 2020, so just before, uh, in 2019, so just before the outbreak of the virus, 70% uh, uh, of employees were disengaged. Uh, uh, 26% was the turnover, and so every four years uh, your, your complete workforce has changed, and 50% of employees have suffered from burnouts. And this all, in, in um, you know, if you put numbers to, to the spending and what it costs to a company, we arrive at about three trillion a year and in the United States alone. So there is really a massive problem that has to be tackled. And so um, if, if we want to uh, solve or at least to address the issues, I think we have to come with solutions that are bottom up and not top down. Uh, so the control and command um, uh, attitude of companies has worked till, till today. I think it's not going to work in the future. Um, th there is a, a grassroots leadership that can be fostered, nurtured, and with the power of communities, you allow to do all these things. You enable employees to be part of the, the, the solution, which is something that I've said already before in this talk. And, um, but also you, you give yourself the opportunity to identify the next generation of leaders because being a community leader can be anyone in the company and as human resources, you can really identify them and, and give them more opportunities to, um, to have their voice in, in the company. So the way we do that at Mixer is, and, and I, I love your community centers, because we'd, we would be the perfect add-on, you know, to build on what you are creating by having technology um, uh, enabling all these people to stay together and to create that community over time. Um, a community is not built overnight and, and having hybrid um, communities or uh, the, the future of work, uh, we have to adapt, but do, so create solutions where it works, where people really can create a community over time and stick together, create this loyalty to each other, create this trust, the belonging, um, and that's uh, psychological safety, which, which we all need to bring our whole self to work um, and, and I think it's, it's a beautiful alignment, you know, what you are doing and what we do um, uh, to, to give the best to um, every employee who really wants to be part of that. I, I love that, Patricia and Alex, with wonderful sentiments. I, I want to get Pina in this conversation, you know, coming from Japan, you know, Japan, uh, I can say I there's few cultures in the world where the office is as central to the, to the, to the national identity. And the Japanese salary man, you know, that there's a, there's an annual morning meeting, uh, Chore, which I'm probably pronouncing right. So, so Pina, tell me about how does working from home and working remotely in Japan with a very, you know, where FaceTime is very highly prized. How's that working? Okay. <laughs> okay, let me talk about that. And uh, as uh, the, um, as it is mentioned, uh, the Japan is much much. Uh, I can say, depending on the office. Even we have no uh, very small land, but uh, everyone uh, coming together to the office and uh, work together. Uh, and the uh, same time coming and same time leaving. <laughs> so that was uh, common before COVID. 
But uh, I'd like to share my screen uh, the what we've done for the after COVID or the with the COVID. Can you see my screen? Okay. Yeah, we can see it. Yeah. So the there was a uh, one office, one office. Everyone coming every day, at same time and leaving same time. But now this is our office. We refined the office because of the COVID. So we define, uh, refine, uh, redefine the office to five dimension rather than just monopole on the office. Now our office is a the prop. Uh, the prior uh, the office was the center office. This is just coming on demand. So only the meeting, uh, the and the necessary meeting coming. But uh, now the uh, ninety percent of the work is done in remote office. This is orange area. And the between center office and remote office, we have satellite office very close to each uh, people's home. So we uh, contract with WeWork, Regis, and Office Pass. And uh, in Tokyo area, we have uh, about 200 of office places. That is convenient from the, each employee. And in addition to these three, we have now resort office in several area, in resort area. Uh, this is not often used, but uh, maybe by monthly, uh, the, uh, the, our employee going to the resort and um, get relaxed for work. In, in addition to those uh, four uh, real office, we have virtual office. Um, everyone logged in and uh, there's uh, avatars on screen and can talk uh, anytime uh, using my microphone. So now we have uh, the uh, made up uh, this uh, five dimension office and our <coughs> uh, productivity uh, is uh, increased. Um, the six five percent employee said the productivity is increased, and the thirty percent is uh, not different, and uh, about uh, the five percent says it decreased. And uh, as a result, our uh, we are uh, the reporting the financial result every year because we are a listed company. Our uh, uh, profit was record high from the listing, so. Uh, we cannot go back to the normal before COVID. So our um, impact uh, of the COVID uh, to the office usage or office definition was uh, great. And uh, we, we decided not to become, uh, not to uh, reverse to, uh, to before. So we, we decided to continue remote office uh, for 70 or 80 percent. That, 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 Thank you. That's quite a plan, P, uh, Pina. I gotta say, I think we're all jealous of these resort offices that you you have. So we'll have to we'll have to dig in more of that. Now I want to go to to Christian here as a fellow venture investor. Uh, I, I gotta we gotta get your your insights. You know, when we think of multinational companies, I think for the majority of us, for the majority of time, we think of these Fortune one thousand or the, maybe the Russell three thousand large global companies that can have that, that kind of multinational reach. I think probably a lot of, now that the world's a lot of flatter, that's probably not the case. Like, tell me, Christian, from your vantage point, you, you're working across five different countries. Are you thinking that are we going to see an avalanche of entrepreneurship or is this going to be, are we looking at new company creation? Uh, tell, give, give us your crystal ball. Give us your thoughts. <clears throat> Yeah, no, great, um, great, great question. So, so I think absolutely we're gonna we're gonna see a avalanche of, of entrepreneurship uh, for many reasons. But one 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 reason that's really stood stood out for me is just to take a very small sort of story example. So um, I, I I advise multiple um, accelerators, and you know most accelerators have a model in place where they take in a lot of applications, they sort through the applications, they select twelve companies. The companies fly to San Francisco or Berlin or Cape Town or Oslo, and they, they sit there for three months because, of course, they do uh, because the mentors are on site and, uh, you know, that's how they design the programs. So I was working with one accelerator um, last year, well, year and a half almost, 
And, and I asked them, like, how are you guys planning to adapt to COVID? And they're like, well, you know, we're kind of hoping that it's going to pass in a few weeks. I was like, well, yeah, that's probably not a good, uh, good strategy. L- long story short, you know, they, they decided to completely flip their model on its head and say that we are jumping in and we are aiming to build one of the world's leading digital accelerator programs. And we have to rethink every step of that process. It's not a matter of you know taking an in-person model and just going um, going remote. You have to rethink every step. Um, and in that program, you know, I got a chance to work with many companies that said we would never even have applied had it been a you know required three months on site. And the consequences, just take one of those companies. It's a Dutch company. It, it now has operations in Asia, Europe, and the Caribbean. Uh, we're working on getting it listed in Oslo later this year. And that just happened at a much faster pace. So one of the things that I'm seeing, kind of echoing Alex again, is because of the speed of, of technologies and platforms and events like this, you know, a lot of the things where we always expected to travel, it's no longer an option, which means that we're able to work much faster which means that many companies are able to grow and scale faster, uh, which also means that it's much more attractive to be, to be an investor and advisor in this space. So um, interesting times, and a lot of business schools and a lot of accelerator programs are, are still needing to adapt because they haven't really accepted that this trend is here to stay. They're kind of you know just waiting to get back into that classroom or, or the, um, the conference room. Interesting. Well, we, yeah, I think... Pina maybe mentioned this in his presentation, and uh, you touched him on this little, Christian. You know, if we can work really, we're you working from home, there's working remotely. Well, are we all, are our tropical islands going to be now, a vacation going to be more permanent now that we can kind of work, uh, kind of work from anywhere? Like, I'm curious, we have a global panel here, like, are, are we going to see a migration to certain countries or certain areas now that we're, we're kind of uh, a little, I guess, flat, we're, we're not geographically constrained to our offices anymore? Well, I'll, uh, I'll just chime in very quickly. So I'm, I'm actually joining you from a mountaintop in Norway. And my, my home is about an hour and a half. My office is about an hour and a half away. And this, this works fine. You know, this is a great place to get work done. Uh, having said that, though, you know, I'll be the first to say, I'm getting a little bit fed up with um, Zoom calls, like like you know the eight to twelve hour Zoom calls every day. So I'm excited to get back in person, but not necessarily getting back to the office. Uh, so I think there's there's a nuance a nuance there. Uh, but you know, moving forward, there is going to be a lot of flexibility in how we work. Uh, but very few people are going to go back to the traditional in office uh, setup. And, and again. I, I, Pina, I really liked the slide you showed in terms of your five offices. That's, that's a beautiful, uh, beautiful construct. Yeah, uh, I, I agree with what Christian said. Um, I think it's probably going to be more of a hybrid model in the future. We did a survey um, on for people who are located in places, in cities where we already have an office, how many days on average would you like to go into work? Uh, and the average was... Uh, two days. Um, so people chose that they would like to go into these community centers um, and would consider it a benefit, but only wanted to go in two days a week. Um, and so I do think, um, to Christian's point, that it's probably going to be this multimodal, multimodal um, hybrid mo- um, of, of different kind of um, forums. And the, what, the, the, the other piece I would comment on in terms of locations um, is I I think in the future you're going to have governments competing for talents so I think you should in the future Tanvir I I think you you know governments will be startups in a sense that they have to compete for people if your workforce and talent are mobile are global um, and you know governments need to compete to create those attractive conditions to attract them. And we start to see that um, in kind of hot spots like um, Miami, um, you know, uh, Singapore, 
um, and really kind of, you know, actively creating policies and conditions that um, make it more attractive. So I think one trend we might see in the future is the idea of cities as a startup or jurisdictions as a startup competing um, for um, to, to bring this, this talent and, and community for uh, particular um, industries. So, so Alex, are we going to see, uh, you know, to, to people, to our global audience, the, the mayor of Miami is famous. Uh, in, in Miami, they drink a Cuban coffee drink called a cafecito. And if you have a tech company and you want to move to Miami, you, you just a tweet, you can get a coffee with the mayor and have a cafecito and it gets streamed live. Yeah, I just came from Miami uh, last week, um, and it's it's true. I mean, listen, they're 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 making um, they're reducing kind of red tape to um, to opening businesses. It's obviously a zero state tax uh, jurisdiction. Um, they're trying to put in place additional infrastructure to to make it an attractive place um, to live, and and the government is very welcoming, right? Um, where I'm based now in California. In the Bay Area, they're they're very hostile towards entre- entrepreneurs. Believe it or not, they uh, they seem to want to kill the goose that laid the golden egg. Um, and so, you know, a lot of people are in the Bay Area are are saying, "Well, is it is it worth it? Why why not look at these other jurisdictions who are actively trying to court um, entrepreneurs?" So, I, I do think it'll become, um, you know, governments for the first time. Will need to start to to act actively compete. They can't just rest on their laurels and, you know, expect us to just abide by their monopolies without any form of innovation. Um, I think people do more have a choice now, and with those choices, I think governments will need to uh, compete. And I think that that's a net positive, right? If governments need to offer services more efficiently, just like businesses need to offer services more efficiently and for for better value, I think that the you know um, everybody will benefit. Um, I think it'll be a net um, benefit in, in the long term to see governments um, needing to become more efficient and deliver governmental services with with greater. I love it, and I'm, I'm James being mindful of time here. Um, we have about a, a few minutes, so I want to do. I have a quick little fun little game here. It's called these lightning round of questions, and the challenge is you can't use more than five words to answer these questions. So it's going to be it's going to be quick. It's going to be fun. We're, we're going to have a little we're going to have a little challenge. So, so what is the best technology or tool that you've adopted on your team in this kind of remote work environment? And so I'll go first. For me, it's Notion. So. Uh, why not, Patricia or uh, Patricia? Why don't you go next? Um, for me, it's community is everything, and it's Mixer. So this has been the great tool. I love it, uh, Christian. We have built our own online simulation. Uh, I, I need more than five words, but we built our built our own. Pina. Yeah, I, I, I can choose one. We have been um, adopted about uh, 20 cloud services for doing remote work. But they, uh, about the communication, uh, the Slack is everywhere work. And uh, it's very visible conversation of the company. So uh, I would say Slack, but uh, many cloud services are good for us. Thank you. Uh, Alex? Shared Slack channels, if I had to pick one. Yeah, Plus I, feel one. Like, I feel like we got beat by Christian, man. He, he kind of built his own, he built his own and Patricia. We, we got to, we got to, we got to kind of fall in their stead. Okay, this is a, this is a future one. We're, we're 10 years older. Uh, it's 2030. Work from home is on the blank. Completely obvious. Patricia? Yes, well, I think that's great. We have uh, identified future leaders. Um, you know, it's, it's grassroots leadership, and, uh, and that allows everyone and the millennials and the Gen Zs who are in the workforce uh, to really have an impact and to, have, uh, uh, to, ha- to, to work for, for their purpose. So um, I believe that that's the way to go. The default. 
the default and peanut you have that 80 cloud services by 2030 uh sorry yeah so the, the year is 2030 working for, uh, working remotely is blank like whatever what do you think is going to yeah, happen working from home is a uh default it's a yeah. uh, uh, the, uh, the common work style and uh, right. which uh, has a uh, uh, <clears throat> fusion of uh, uh, productivity and the well-being of the people. I, I love it. Well, I'm, I'm very mindful of time here, so I want to give you guys each a chance to have some closing remarks. And uh, why don't we start with Christian? Part, uh, par- parting words to our uh, to, to our uh, to our audience here. I think we're going to look back at the pandemic and say it really kick-started, you know, some obvious trends. Uh, and whether it's from you know, the, the crypto community and, and, and you know, global knowledge workers, um, working remotely is just going to be, you know, obvious. Um, and, and thanks to new technologies and new behaviors, uh, it's just it's going to be completely normal. Pina? Me? Yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, it is great opportunity. My, uh, my take is this, uh, remote work on, uh, related stuff is not, uh, emergency ex- escape that the government says, but it is, it is revolutionary, uh, opportunity that for us to update our work style. Um, yeah, that's my take. Patricia? So um, I, I believe that we have to work on a human-centric approach, um, allowing performance in companies, but also to look at the, um, the, the well-being of employees, to drive innovation, creativity, and to me that is true, um, true belonging, trust, and communities. And, um, and to me, that, that's, that's the only way to go. Alex? Go on mute. Yeah, I, I agree with Christian. In retrospect, I think this transition will be um, you know, obvious. At the same time, I do think we should continually reassess um, the optimal mix of uh, virtual versus off offline and community centers to make sure that the space is perfectly tailored for its purpose. Mm-hmm. I love it. And I think we all deserve our panel. This has been so much fun. We're finishing on time, which I think is, is a, is a, is a, is a good feat as well. And so, you know, to close with, there's a, there is something that Mark Benioff, the founder of Salesforce said, he said, the past is on. We've created a whole new world and it's digital and it's, it's going to be playing out everywhere. So I think that's a fitting quote to close a lot of our panel and all these amazing insights that you've shared so generously with the audience. Um, so, you know, virtually big round of applause and, and I'm looking forward for us to do this again soon. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm very looking forward to seeing some of the best practices and how community evolves between community centers, what Patricia's building with Mixer, what Christian's doing and, and the, the, the incredible technologies that, that Pina is adopting for his company. So thank you guys so much. Thanks for the time. Thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. Take care, everyone. Good, good, good connecting. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.